Jeff Bezos and his brother, meanwhile, are going on the first Blue Origin flight. Here's what I know, want to know about this. Is these just vanity projects? I mean, it's all these rich people. You say it sort of yeah. helps overall because it brings the cost of everything yeah. down, right? So do we, the space sort of, I don't know, culture and team allow these and encourage them because it ultimately it helps yeah, look, exploration it, as well? It's a very interesting question because you, you're right. This is just starts as, you know, Elon Musk wanted to go into space. Richard Branson wants to expand and go into it. Uh, Jeff Bezos has always said, I want to be an astronaut and go into space. So what do you do? You just become a billionaire and, and build your own rocket. Uh, and look, at least he believes in this system that he's putting himself on it. What I would note is Elon Musk has said he hasn't wanted to go on one of his yet. He wants to go to Mars, but he hasn't talked about going to near space. Richard Branson has as well. So it's at least a big credibility or, you know, literally putting his, his life in his own belief. That's to, true, to, I guess. To, to do this. How long would it take to go to Mars and back? So, I mean, we're, Mars, you're talking about seven months to get there. You know, Mars is a huge jump. Right. And when they're talking about doing this, it's a, a long-term journey. And Elon Musk wants to do it. Mm. Uh, but I, I do think you have a raise the question is, all right, well, these billionaires can do anything. And he said, it is a slight vanity project. You know, one of the reasons he's chosen to go up on July 20th is so that he can beat the other two. And July 20th is also the Apollo 11 moon landing. Right. So, like, it's a big statement, right? It's not necessarily for science. Yeah. This is for your ego. Uh, it's another version of a big deer head on the wall, basically. Pretty much, yeah. It brings me to SpaceX and Axiom Space. So they've agreed to fly three more private astronaut missions to the space station. A thrill for them, I'm sure. But what do they do up there? I mean, are they, you know, idiots like me? What does that button do? What happens here? So, so this is a very different configuration. So Axiom Space is essentially, instead of being an astronaut as part of a company or a country, you're an astronaut now part of a company. You have science goals, mission goals, and you're essentially a professional astronaut. But instead of being paid by the US or European government, you're paid by Axiom. Right. Now, Axiom is actually for, started by a former head of NASA and headed up by a whole bunch of NASA astronauts. So they're actually essentially people who said, we know how to do this. We can actually build a private company so that instead of you having to be an American citizen, right. now you essentially can be any citizen and participate. It's sort of like the direct co commercialization of space, the, the, which happens anyway, but this is a, you know, a direct link. Pay for it all your own way and then you can get what you want. Exactly. So it's a very, instead of just being all about profits going to a company, a very direct way of taking it out of a national sector mm. and to the private company. And their first mission, as we, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is scheduled for January. And they already ink to say, well, we don't want to send three more up. Uh, each with a different crew. So it actually ultimately means you could imagine like an Australian or New Zealander actually going up on this instead of being reliant on Americans. I know we've got a lot of tech out of space exploration. Let me ask you this. Is this true? This It feels like an old wives' tale that um, one of the early missions, the US spent all this money and developed this pen that could work without gravity and the Russians took up a pencil. Yeah. So, so that, that is an old wives' tale, to be fair. The, the, the space spin that can write up and yeah. down. Uh, so that was actually developed as like a product by the company that NASA actually never used. However, uh, but there are some times where people develop maybe overly engineered things that don't need to be because of space or conversely overly engineer something and then realize, oh, wait, it actually works in a dramatically different world. Solar panels being a good example, actually, solar panels don't actually have to work as well in space as they do on Earth. Because it's so close to the sun. There's less that. atmosphere, less yeah. things to do. So it's one of those cases where solar panels just are over-engineered in space because they just work easier, but benefited us here on Earth.